Hi everyone, Luca from lgmphotography.co.uk and in this video uh, I'm going to be talking to you about how to speed up Lightroom 4. Um, now, I was actually going through my um, videos, the videos I made on YouTube and see which one was the most popular and the one that actually came at the top was uh, how to uh, tether uh, with Lightroom. And that was the most popular one. I saw, right, okay, so people are obviously interested in uh, tips, tricks on how to use Lightroom or just, you know, a few help. So I thought uh, I kick off uh, uh, this kind of series of video about Lightroom on how to speed up Lightroom. And I know how important it is for a lot of you who work uh, a lot of time behind your computer and who wants to... Um, obviously get the things done as quick as possible, not as quick as possible, but done it well, but without having the frustration of waiting. The first thing, obviously, I've, I have is, uh, I've got a desktop, um, with, obviously, I have drives uh, linked to the desktop. And it's quite a powerful computer, but it's only got 8 uh, gig of RAMs, which is okay, but it's not uh, the, the best in 2013. Uh, you can easily find a uh, motherboard which will take up to 16, 32 gig, and even laptop who can go even higher than 8 gig. So uh, it's quite an easy thing to get these days. Now, the only thing, the thing you can do first to uh, improve Lightroom is get good drives. Uh, I used to work with uh, HDD drives or HHD drive, I can't remember which one you call it. Uh, which are normal drives. Uh, if you look on the video, I'll put a little link here where you can see me installing an SSD drive. And SSD drive, which stands for a solid state drive, is a great option to, to start work. And the way I work is this way. So I've got my C drive here, which is where I have my Windows 7 setup. And in this C drive, I've got all my Adobe software setup. So what this will do, it, it will uh, load up Lightroom uh, much quicker. Uh, so let me just start here for you. So like, right. So 64 bits. That's it. It's ready to work. And develop. Oh, it's slow. Okay. But uh, yeah. Uh, and this is so it's quite quick to load up, and I'm and I'm ready to work here uh, without a problem. So, right, once it's done, you can go from the develop button, which is where you can obviously uh, change your pictures, to the library uh, without a problem. Uh, so, obviously, this is what SSD does. It kind of helps you um, <coughs> uh, boot up the, the program, and it, it makes kind of everything runs a bit faster, but not that much. And that's what people get a bit confused, I think. And I was one of them, to be honest. So what I've actually done is I've installed an, a second SSD drive where I put my live work. So my Lightroom catalog will be there. So I kind of keep it quite empty all, uh, often. And what I'm actually working on at the moment. So uh, photo shoot I did earlier, uh, recently, and I've got personal photo shoot of my kids. Um, and the way it works is that program is set up here the uh, live work is set up here so it kind of communicate to each other and just to demonstrate uh, the speed of this so what i'll do is i'll copy this folder here which is 3.14 gig to my desktop which is the c drive uh, just to show you how quick the transfer is so that is going at 255 267 megabytes per second so like this, three gigs is done within you know a ten second remaining. Uh, it start to slow down a bit, but on obviously on smaller file on smaller, uh, it will just keep top performance the whole way through. It's so super super fast. Here we go. I've just transferred three and a half gig, three point fourteen gig in what fifteen seconds. So did I copy or did I? So obviously, uh, working with SSD drive is very, very uh, make your transfers of file very efficient and is, is a good thing for Lightroom when you're uploading your picture. Now, if we go into Lightroom now, this is where you can really start making changes. 
one of the major things I find, okay, now let's keep this for the end actually. So what you can do first is, if you go into your file, go into uh, your catalog setup, which is, where is it? No, edit, there we go, catalog settings. So under catalog settings, you have different options. You got general, I've not really touched this, file and link, which we will, and metadata, which I don't really do, but you can uh, kind of do a few things there if you wanted to, but no much that it won't really make much difference. Now, the preview of your pictures will really depends on the performance of your computer, uh, but also the, the screen you are using. So I'm using a Dell Super Sharp, uh, which is I think it's 1600, no 1920 by 1200. So it's quite a high um, high spec screen. So when I went on the preview here, you can obviously decide. Uh, 1024 is pretty much your standard screen. So I went as close as I could. I just went a little higher than I could, uh, and then 282 is the biggest one. Uh, preview quality. Again, depending on which one you want, you go low, medium, and high. And this is really depending on your computer setup. Now, if your computer is not as really powerful and it's a bit slower, a bit old, uh, don't try to go for the high version because this may pr provide you with a better quality image when you're working, but it's just gonna make everything so slow. Uh, so um, what you can do is obviously reduce the standard size preview and reduce the preview quality. And now in all honesty, after you start working, you won't really see much difference. You will see a difference, but not that much. And it's worth it if um, if if it's really hard for you to work and you get frustrated with the, the speed of your computer. So that's one uh, quite important thing you can do. Now, uh, the other things you can do is if you go into your setting, no, what is it? Tools. Okay, it's just trying to look for your preferences. Here we go, preferences. Okay. <clears throat> now, under the preferences, you've got, again, different settings. General, which I don't really touch. Preset, I've not touched anything here. External editing, uh, that again is something you can um, you can do it before you, you export anything. Uh, I, I personally don't really work this way so I've not touched this and I don't think it will make much difference when you're working anyway. File and link, this is where you want to start doing some changes here. So first thing is uh, our embedded fast load data. Uh, this means that um, what it will do is your computer will kind of pick up uh, when you take a picture in RAW, this is really for raw, raw working people. Uh, when you take a picture in RAW, your computer will read a JPEG from it. So it, it won't, uh, Lightroom won't actually bring the, the, the RAW file, it bring the JPEG. And it's asking you in which, uh, do you want the original RAW file to come there or do you want a fast, um, kind of a faster version of the RAW file to come there? And by clicking embedded fast, this will uh, increase the speed of your working. Also, your camera raw cache setting is quite important to have this, again, in a good drive if you have one. If you decide to um, have your SSD uh, drive, you can then set up the location to the SSD and this will help. And I'll put my maximum size to 20 gig, so uh, a massive buffer to work with. Uh, I use the... Uh, I work with Nikon D800, which kind of gives you quite a massive file, uh, so that will help. And the other thing is uh, the video cache, but I don't really use Lightroom for videos. And that is pretty much uh, what you can do here uh, to increase it. Uh, now, let's go into the uh, biggest thing is as you're working, what I find the, the most amazing thing to do uh, to increase the speed of your work. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, <clears throat> oh, I had something already, I think. I did. Yeah. So here we go, it's a folder of raw file. 
nothing uh, nothing extravagant here or I'm gonna do is just gonna bring there we go uh, a few files here okay let me see and this is the, normally the way uh, your uh, Lightroom is set up so okay so it's bringing all the files here I'm just gonna select let's say five I don't need uh, okay import so it's importing the file and that should be quite quick as well the only thing is that it is importing the file from my uh, backup file backup drive and uh, is picking it up and putting it into the SSD drive to work with. Uh, that's a setup I will show in a minute. So here we go, I've got the, the five files, so it's just importing the files now. You see, there we're taking with the D800. Let me just see if I can show you the metadata here. Right, so yeah. I was taking I had the 16 to 28 and I was doing some tests um, kind of figuring out um, something with the white balance here so this was actually a, a black it was absolutely black to my eyes and I took picture at 1 13th of a second if I saw 3200 and this is where it came up with it was great uh, that's the dynamic range of the uh, Nikon D800 for you. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. So let's um, take one with a few details, right? Okay, let me zoom into this. And this is what you're going to do when you work a lot. Is you bring your picture there and you want to check the sharpness of your picture. Now, let's bear in mind that these pictures were just made as a point and shoot camera to test the white balance, nothing else. And here is loading. And it's loading. I have to wait. Right, okay, now I can finally see the sharpness now. Let's go back out, let's check this one here. Okay, so it's obviously rendered once at one to one, and it's it's fine, now it's easy to work. Then I go on to the next picture, let me check the sharpness again. Okay, no, I just turn this away. Okay, so you go into your next picture as you're working through your, your, your photo shoot pictures or your wedding pictures or whatever you do. And you're just waiting here, and this is where it gets frustrating because you just um, you just have to wait, and between each picture, loading, trying to check the details. And what you want to do when you work is you want things to be in and out. You know, you open a picture, you go for another series of three or four pictures, which is pretty much the same, and then you bring it up, and you have to wait for this to load uh, to check the. Um, the, uh, the how sharp it is the picture. So let's. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete those photos here. And I'll explain what I'm doing now. Delete them from the library as well, so I'm sure they're not duplicating. Okay. Uh, No. Okay, they're not here anymore. That's good. Okay, so let me just close this. <clears throat> now, let me do this again with <clears throat> Okay, so let's bring even a few more pictures with more details even. I know let's do the same so you can actually see the difference. Now, this is before you click the import button, that's the important thing to do. What Lightroom does is it will automatically preview your uh, render your picture as a preview as minimal. What the, what this means is that you uh, Lightroom is going to bring a preview which is the minimum preview and when you actually try to look your picture at one to one to check sharpness or check the details Lightroom is going to have to import those data from your drive or from wherever you've imported those picture 
Now, one thing you can do to avoid this work in the background as you're working is actually uh, render one-to-one. -one. So what does this mean is that when you import it, it is going to take longer to import your pictures, as there is no doubt about this. But I'd rather just put it there, go and make myself a cup of coffee and come back and know that I can work with a picture like that. Uh, and this is what it's doing. So uh, it's just imported a picture, which is a preview, and it's now importing uh, the one-to-one -one preview. And let's have a look at the difference now. <clears throat> well, as I go into the develop mode, I'll wait for the rendering to be finished here to have a fair, um, fair difference between uh, the, the previous one which was rendered as minimal to this one, which is rendered at one to one. So, okay, last one. <clears throat> so here we go, Lightroom now is importing all the data, everything ready for you to work with. And when, as you're working with your pictures now, you will not have any um, need to uh, pick up something from the drive or from the original file, everything is there. And now what you can do is go inside straight away and open a picture. Okay. And straight away I can check the sharpness of the picture. There is no waiting time, there is no loading time anymore. Um, let's check the sharpness again. No, oh, that wasn't expected, okay. But So yeah, that is, I personally find once you've done the upgrade you can do, uh, because you may not be able to do any upgrade on your computer or on your laptop, I find this uh, probably been uh, one of the best things to do, is render your picture preview in one-to-one -one and kind of lower the resolution and the, um, the, the settings I showed earlier. And this should really make a big difference in your workflow. Uh, and that is pretty much the way I work. So if you have any questions, but if you have any tips, please post them down below. So uh, anyone who's watching this video can go through the comments and maybe uh, pick up other tips. Um, and even if you can give me tips, that'd be great. Um, yeah, and that is pretty much it. So any question, let me know. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers. See ya.